Okay, um, I'm going to talk about demonstrating, obviously, a little bit um, more so mostly. Um, so the basics. Horses have um, incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. They can also have wolf teeth, but not all of them do. Um, males have 40 to 42 permanent teeth, and females have 36 to 40. And that is because um, females don't always have those canines, and then you factor in who has the wolf teeth and who don't. Um, horses are hypsodonts, so their teeth, which means their teeth continually erupt, which is kind of like rabbits in the same way. Um, so they don't necessarily grow new teeth per se, like it's not a new um, tissue formation, but their teeth start out long, like kind of like that tooth that is passing or is being passed around. And then as they get older, they continue to erupt through the gums, and that accounts for the wear that um, they put on their teeth every year, usually around three to four millimeters, but it's very... Gabby, are you yep. going to have pictures of wolf teeth? Um, I okay. don't know that there's any on there specifically. Okay, so maybe when we get to some place where you could show where they would be yeah. and describe them a little bit? Um, so baby basics. Uh, foals are typically born without their teeth erupted, so um, they kind of look like that picture in the top there. You can see his little gums. So you're saying none, none of the teeth are erupted? Not usually. Wow. Um, the first deciduous incisors, which are their baby teeth, deciduous is um, their first first round of teeth, um, and the premolars erupt within the first week or so. Usually incisors within the first week and then the premolars look by two weeks. Um, but again, that can vary a little bit. So they have 24 deciduous or milk teeth, which are baby teeth, um, 12 incisors and 12 premolars. They begin to get their permanent teeth around two and a half years old, and that starts with those first incisors that you see in that baby in the bottom picture, and then um, kind of goes from there, premolars to molars. So, oh no, what did I just do? Okay, the, the middle, the bottom button is the There middle. we go. Okay, um, so this is a picture of a, um, obviously a skull. You can see these long teeth here. That's um, a younger horse that hasn't obviously had that eruption and wear. Um, on the right, there's a picture of a brachydont, which is like you or a dog or um, other animals like that that don't have those erupting teeth. And you can see that the crown is a lot longer on the um, hypsodont animals. And that's why they have the ability to continually erupt because that that crown actually wears off when they chew. Would this be a good one to do the wolf teeth? Or I guess that next one is too. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, so the maxillary arcade, with the, which is the top jaw, um, you can kind of see um, incisors here. These are canine teeth, premolars, there's three, and then um, molars there. And then uh, the wolf teeth is actually a, it's that first premolar, and um, so w if they have those, they're right here, and they're really small. They're not, um, they're not anything like the rest of the premolars. So, okay, so, because it's, would it be like right here in this one then? Mm -hmm. Right there. And what, you'd say it's smaller, would it be more like a incisor or canine, or would it be? They're even smaller than those. We actually, okay. um, a lot of times people will... People want them removed when they're babies because they can interfere with the bit. Um, so we'll remove them with an instrument that um, kind of tunnels out that tooth, and that's like the size of a good-sized Phillips screwdriver. So they're they're pretty small comparatively. Um, mandibular arcade, which is the bottom, uh, molars, premolars, canines, incisors. Um, and if you notice on the mandibular arcade, it's a little bit more narrow than the maxillary arcade, um, which <clears throat> goes on to show that when they, so when they chew, um, they kind of chew in a circular pattern. So their top jaw um, rubs on their bottom jaw like that. And so they get these points and hooks on their teeth. Um, so usually if they have a normal, um, a normal bite when they chew, it's pretty common to get these points on the cheek surface or the buccal surface of the top top teeth and then the lingual or the tongue surface of the bottom teeth. And then they can also have points on the front and back, which is rostral and collar surfaces of the teeth as well. 
Um, so why dentistry is important for horses, it's often used in age identification and there are a lot of different systems. Um, some vary, but you can get kind of an estimate. Um, it depends on what literature you look at. So one of the, there's a couple common factors that you look at when you're aging a horse um, by their teeth. So the first one would be the shape of the occlusal surface, which is the surface that they chew with. And if you hold the tooth and you look straight down at it, it's that top surface. Um, that shape changes as they get older. It starts as an oval. Um, some, put, some say that it goes to uh, just a triangle. It gets kind of circular and it goes to a triangle. And some will tell you that it goes oval to triangle to rectangle. But it varies as the tooth erupts. So you can kind of get an idea of how they are there. Um, and then there's another thing called Galvane's groove, and that, um, that happens on their incisors, and it's a groove that starts at the gum line, and then it proceeds down the tooth, and usually you see that first when they're about 10 years old, and then it goes away um, somewhere between 20 and 25. Usually at about 15 years old, that groove is about halfway down the tooth. Um, so here you can, this is a chart you can use to age. Um, the angle of their incisor also changes a little bit. Um, this is that groove around 15 years old and you know closer to late teens or early 20s. So some of the things that they can have um, problems with, malocclusions, um, points and hooks from that grinding um, motion. Quitting is if they have um, problems chewing their food, sometimes it'll get moist and then it'll roll up into a ball and they kind of drop food that way. They can get ulcers in their mouth from those points on their um, their gums, their the cheeks and their tongue and things like that. And then uh, fractured teeth, which isn't super common in horses, but it does happen. We get slab fractures more than anything. Um, so some of these, these are some of the malocclusions that they can have. Um, this one is obviously just crooked. Um, Underbites, overbites. This is called a wave mouth. I don't. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, um, but you can see some. These teeth are longer on this side and then shorter here. And from the side in this picture, you can kind of see the teeth that. actually get a wave in them. Um, and then hooks and points they can have um, here. And you can kind of see these points on the um, buccal surface of the teeth there. And there's another hook. And that just, it's its pretty normal. You have to um, kind of manage that. Now, is the hook a result of not having the tooth on the opposite side? Yeah. So it, some, sometimes it can be uh, caused by an improper bite. But most of the time, those hooks are from, um, and the points especially, are from the bottom jaw being more narrow and the top jaw, that, cir that yeah. circular motion, they, the outside doesn't get ground as much as the inside. Um, so these are ulcers you can see that are caused from these points um, on this horse's teeth, um, on this cheek surface. That gets pretty painful. Um, most of them tolerate them for a long time, but then they'll get to the point where they drop feed or they don't eat or, you know, et cetera. Um, so managing your horse's mouth. They need to have an annual dental exam, ideally. Um, you'll, you can have their teeth floated, um, and that files away those sharp points, that wave, the um, poor bite that they might have. Now, I think most people use power floats. I don't really know anybody that uses solely hand floats anymore, just because it's so much more labor intensive. Um, but things to watch, just manners, preferences of your horse, when they're eating, how their weight is, um, and then abnormalities in the way they eat, the way they're chewing, um, can, can indicate um, having problems in the mouth. So when you're looking to get your horse floated um, at the vet, there's a lot of different ways that people do it. We use a power flow and we hang heads um, from something. We've used tree limbs, um, preferably stall, preferably, Tractors and yeah, motors. preferably tops of the stall, um, barn beams, rafters, that kind of thing. But, um, now, is the horse sedated? The horse is sedated, yeah. With? Uh... With, it depends, I, it depends on um, your vet. We, we use mostly datomidine. Um, sometimes we have to top them off with some Torb. Um, the combination usually works pretty well for those ones that are. are you gotta really be bad. careful because you gotta keep them standing. Right. You'd like to, yeah. Yeah, 
Daytonian is pretty safe. I mean, you can give them a pretty hefty dose, and they, it, it's kind of funny because they do wobble, and a lot of people think that they're going to fall over, but they will not fall over. <laughs> they have to be pretty, pretty drunk to fall down. Um, we do have, you got to be careful with the old horses because for whatever reason, it does not take very much to get them wobbly, but they can still move their head. It's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty common thing. So dosing older horses can be... Um, you, so you take a lighter dose mm -hmm. because their Usually metabolism is slowed down and the half-life of the drug is longer in them than yeah. the younger horse. Yeah. Um, <coughs> questions? Yeah. Would you by chance know like the evolutionary importance of wolf teeth? Um, that's a good question. I you know, I read something over that years ago, but I don't I don't recall. So a wolf it's tooth not. is like an extra premolar. It's it's their first premolar. You is it their first premolar or is it a supernumerary tooth? I think you know what I, mean? I think when they're like when you're numbering on the quadrants, yeah. I think the um, the first premolar that is visible is two. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, okay. So technically, it is the first premolar, I believe. and it may I don't or may not be that. there. <laughs> it's fascinating to watch teeth being floated. I mean, it's crazy because.